Researchers used ultrasound to induce a hibernation-like state in rodents. Ultrasonic signals sent to the brains of rodents put them into a state similar to lethargy or hibernation. Scientists believe the technique could one day help save critically ill or injured people. Astronauts on long space flights will also be able to use it. The new method involves bombarding a region in the brain with ultrasound, which is responsible for, among others, for controlling metabolism and temperature. In studies on mice, scientists were able to lower their average body temperature by up to 3.5 degrees Celsius. At the same time, a decrease in heart rate and a decrease in oxygen consumption were observed in the rodents. The research provides clues on how to safely and non-invasively induce a state similar to hibernation or torpor in humans. The scientists published their findings in the journal Nature Metabolism. The new technique could be used in medicine, especially in life-threatening conditions such as stroke and heart attack. Inducing a state resembling lethargy can extend the time needed to start treatment and increase the patient's chances of survival, explains the lead author of the study, Professor Hong Chen of Washington University in St. Louis. Nature knows many cases of hibernation. Some mammals, birds, insects, amphibians and fish can conserve energy in situations where food is scarce or the temperature is too low. They enter a temporary state during which their metabolism is drastically lowered. In this state, the animal's body temperature and heart rate drop, and the blood flows more slowly. The heart can only beat a few times a minute and inhale once a minute. Brain activity also decreases drastically. The profound physiological changes associated with hibernation and similar states reduce the amount of energy animals need to survive. For this reason, scientists have long wanted to find out whether humans can also be put into a similar state. This could apply to seriously injured people or astronauts on long space flights. The first mention of the potential medical usefulness of hypothermia, i.e. a decrease in body temperature, dates back to ancient Egypt. It was also described by Napoleon's chief surgeon Baron de Lery. He noticed that people die faster in the heat than in the cold. Currently, surgeons use hypothermia to increase patient survival during heart and brain surgery. Humans however, are not naturally equipped with mechanisms that induce a state of lethargy or hibernation. Although, as researchers suggested three years ago, our ancestors may have had such an ability at some point in their evolution. Currently, however, we do not have such possibilities. So it is not known whether this procedure can be used safely. To test this, scientists created a special hat, emitting ultrasound and put it on the heads of mice. The device sent waves to a part of the brain called the preoptic area, Latin, area preoptica. This is the area of the hypothalamus that controls body temperature, sleep, and activates hibernation or torpor in many animals. When exposed to ultrasound, the mice immediately entered a hibernation-like state. Their body temperature, heart rate and oxygen consumption dropped drastically. The test animals also became lethargic and ate significantly less. Using ultrasound, the researchers were able to keep the mice in this condition for up to 24 hours without observing any negative signs for their health. After turning off the device emitting ultrasonic waves, the body temperature and activity level of the mice returned to normal in less than 90 minutes. After repeating the experiment, this time on rats, the researchers noticed that the device also reduced their body temperature, but by 2 degrees Celsius. According to the authors of the study, 
This proves that the ultrasound emitting cap can work on mammals that do not naturally enter similar states. The researchers emphasize that further research is needed to successfully apply their invention to humans. We could imagine astronauts wearing a helmet-like device designed to send ultrasounds to the hypothalamic region to induce a lethargy-like state, says Professor Chen. However, there are a number of hurdles that scientists must overcome before they can use similar devices. One of them is the fact that the ultrasonic cap caused changes only in the brains of the tested rodents. Meanwhile, hibernation that occurs naturally in animals is also accompanied by changes at the hormonal and molecular level. These processes are not yet fully understood. The effect of prolonged hibernation on the brain is also unknown. Some studies indicate that lethargic animals may lose their memory without answering the basic questions about hibernation. The entire procedure will not be applicable to humans. Scientists have determined the origin of the Venus of Willendorf. The Venus of Willendorf is perhaps one of the most famous examples of early European art. It was carved about 30,000 years ago. Years ago from a rock called Oolite. It was found in 1908 in Austria, near Willendorf. However, Oolite is nowhere to be found in the vicinity of this town. Thanks to the most modern techniques, scientists were able to determine where the material from which the figurine was made came from. A team of scientists led by anthropologist Gerhard Weber from the University of Vienna, two geologists, Alexander Lukeder and Matthias Hartshauser, and prehistory specialist Walperger Antel Weiser from the Natural History Museum in Vienna, will take a close look at the famous Venus of Willendorf. Using the most modern research techniques, scientists determined that the rock from which the figurine was made originated hundreds of kilometers from the place where it was found in 1908. The description of the research and the conclusions drawn from it were published in the journal, Scientific Reports. An almost 11-centimeter figurine of Venus from Willendorf carved by a Paleolithic sculptor 30,000 years ago. Years ago, is unique in many ways. It is one of the most important examples of early art in Europe. No feet or face. Instead, the author emphasized features that anthropologists usually associate with female fertility. The breasts, abdomen and thighs were emphasized. The head, on the other hand, is covered with an elaborate headdress or thick, curly hair that obscures the features of the face. Abundant shapes of women are considered a canon of beauty among many traditional or primitive societies, which has been confirmed by anthropogenic research. But in prehistoric times, they must have been rare and considered something extraordinary. Today, we consider such abundant shapes to be obesity, but in the distant past they testified to wealth, high position and, of course, fertility. Other, similar examples of art related to the Gravitian culture, which also includes the Venus of Willendorf, were carved from animal bones, most often from ivory. There are also examples of stone figures. However, the Venus of Willendorf was made of a different material. The name of the figurine refers to the place where it was found. But the material it's made of isn't in this area. The statuette was made of oolite, a sedimentary rock that forms in shallow seas in the coastal zone. New research sheds a little more light on the mobility of the first modern people living in the Stone Age in this part of Europe. The computer microtomography used by the group of scientists allowed to obtain images of the internal structure of the sculpture with a resolution of up to 11.5 micrometers. The images showed that the figurine is not uniform. 
The material has a different density and numerous inclusions. Small pieces of shell dated to the Jurassic period and grains of iron oxides and hydroxides called limonites. The impurities found in the material meant that one could try to match the rock to oolite samples collected elsewhere to narrow down where the rock could have come from. Participating geologists who had previously worked with oolites obtained comparative samples from all over Europe. These were cut into tiny slices and carefully examined. Studies have shown that there are no similar rocks within a radius of 200 kilometers from Willendorf. A very good match. So close that the rock is almost indistinguishable. Came from Lago di Garda in northern Italy. This would mean that the figurine, or at least the material from which it was made, traveled with its owner from south to north across the Alps, a route that would be approximately 730 kilometers long through the mountainous region. People from the gravity and culture sought and inhabited areas favorable to them. When the climate or the situation related to the availability of prey changed, they moved further, mostly along rivers. Such a journey could take generations to complete, explains Weber. Researchers in simulations established two possible routes. One would lead east around the Alps through the Pannonian Basin. The second is the road directly through the Alps. However, it is not clear whether this was possible 30,000 years ago. Years ago. Especially since the climate deteriorated during this period. If there was a glacier there at the time, it would be a rather unlikely variant. However, the 730-kilometer path along the Adige in and Danube rivers always lies below 1,000 meters above sea level, with the exception of 35 kilometers above Lake Reshen. Geologists have also identified a second possible origin of the oolite from which Venus of Willendorf formed. It is even further than Lago di Garda, namely, eastern Ukraine, about 1,600 kilometers from Willendorf. The match is not as good as in the case of the Italian lake, but better than in the case of other tested samples. Scholars indicate that this possibility cannot be ruled out, 